CPI data report is tomorrow, one hour before the market opens. For those that are wanting to watch this live, I will be hosting a free live session on my YouTube channel. All you literally need to do is subscribe and turn on your post notifications so YouTube sends you a notification when it is that I go live. I'm going to go live 15 minutes before this CPI data report comes out. So again, subscribe, drop a thumbs up on this video. I need this video to hit 1500 likes. And today we're going to be talking about expectations. There's no better time to right now prepare for the CPI data report more now than ever before, especially with everything that's going on. I hope that you guys learned something new. And if you do, again, just make sure you get this video to over 1500 likes. Let's go ahead and jump right to it. I wanted to keep today's video kind of just like on point. So what are expectations, right, for this up and coming CPI data report? For those that are unaware, our CPI data report is pretty much just uh, reporting the month over month increase or decrease on consumer goods. CPI stands for Consumer Price Index. And let's say, again, uh, one of the commodities that we follow are food, right? If we see the average price of food increase from June to July, then guess what? On this up and coming CPI data report, we'll see the increase. If we see that prices decrease, then that should reflect here. And then we'll see that be reported in that CPI data report. So uh, I wanted to talk about this. Uh, economists expect, right? This is a question that everyone keeps asking. What do you expect about this CPI data report? First off, no one actually knows. There's expectations based off of people tracking, right? Economists expect July's consumer price index, which is the one that's going to be released tomorrow, is going to rise by 0.2. I'm gonna explain that in just a little bit, which means that it will be down from 1.3% of June. I'll explain that in just a little bit. According to the Dow Jones, this means that year over year, the pace of the CPI for July is expected to fall from 9.1, which is currently where we're at, down to 8.7. For those that are unaware, 9.1 is our current rate of inflation. It's the highest that we've experienced in the past 40 years. So how are we going to see a rise of 0.2, but then a expected to see a drop to 8.7? Uh, I explained it in today's earlier video. If you guys didn't check it out, uh, I explained it more in detail. But pretty much this is the report that's going to be released tomorrow. This is the one that was released in July that again captured the CPI for June. All we're going to receive is we're going to remove the month of July and then they're going to add the new month of July. And if we see that we dropped a 0.5 off of the CPI data and then we add an increase of 0.2, we should see a drop overall from 9.1 down to 8.7. There's an exact formula on how they get this adjusted CPI number. Uh, so it's not just adding them all across the board. So that's just how I get the rough estimate, uh, just for you to have a very simplistic explanation of how the CPI data is actually calculated for the past 12 months. They present to you in the report, so the report that we get tomorrow is going to have July, and it's gonna have the new month of July, which we don't have based off of you know this last month's. But this previous month of July is not actually calculated in the CPI data. It's just, it has it there. So you know what we dropped, the 0.5, and then what we added. So what we're hoping for, based off of expectation, is that we add 0.2 and we drop 0.5. So again, we're removing 0.5 and then we're adding 0.2, which means that we should actually go down, right? This is the expectation that we have for tomorrow. Now, what happens, right? If we come in higher than what is expected, the market should drop. So if we come in higher than seeing that 0.2% increase, then the market should drop. Meaning that, again, it didn't drop as much as expected, but also if we come in higher than 9.1, then the market's probably gonna drop a little bit more aggressively. Uh, now, if we come in lower than expected, so let's say that we you know, are expecting the 0.2, right? But let's say that we come in at 0.1, or let's say that there's actually um, you know, just zero, right? Then that's better than expected. We should actually see the market drop. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, the market rise. If we come in as expected, and or better than expected, then the market should rise based off of that report. 
Now, the reason I'm sharing this with you is because of how much weight has been put on the Federal Reserve. Now, why is lower CPI good? CPI is again the rate of inflation. This is the, I mean, the CPI is just the report. With that report, we determine where inflation is at. By having a lower rate of inflation, it means, of course, things are getting less expensive. Uh, this also means that the Federal Reserve, based off of them raising interest rates, it's finally having an influence in raising interest rates. I'm sure as many of you guys have heard of 0.5%, right? And or three quarters of a percent, uh, which we've done for the past previous two months. Now, as long as we see that inflation has possibly peaked, then that means that we should be retracing for the months that follow. As long as we continue to retrace on the inflation number, then that means that the Federal Reserve doesn't have to take such an aggressive route or approach in raising interest rates. If we see that inflation is rising still, that means that the Federal Reserve can possibly raise interest rates a full percentage point, which is something that they have not done in a really long time. Now, one of the last things that I wanted to make sure that I talked about was core CPI. If we see that core CPI is rising, because there's, let me explain this. There's food and energy, one of the biggest contributors to the CPI data, of putting us at 9.1%. These have been hit the hardest in the grand scheme of things. By the Federal Reserve raising interest rates, they can't affect the supply of energy. They cannot affect, uh, affect the supply of food. So this, the, the Federal Reserve, they know that them raising interest rates has no influence on this. They can influence all of this down below, right? If they, make it, if they raise interest rates, they make it more expensive for people to borrow money. They make it more expensive for businesses to borrow money. Therefore, you know, hoping that consumers begin to spend less because things become more expensive. That's, that's their goal. Now, the reason I'm sharing this with you is because of how important core CPI is. If we see that these variables of what the Federal Reserve can influence, if we see that that is rising month over month, even if we do retrace on overall CPI, this can still cause the market to sell off. This is where it kind of gets um, a little challenging. So you have to think about the whole piece of the pie. There's a specific area that the Federal Reserve does not influence. So there's really not much they, they can do there. But there's that specific specific piece of the pie, which is everything down here that they can influence. And if they see that that is still rising, that they will most likely have to take a more aggressive approach in raising interest rates. One thing that I do want to share with you is it wouldn't really surprise me if CPI data does actually come in lower uh, than expected, as we've seen a consistent decrease in oil prices for second seven consecutive weeks, which again, oil is one of the biggest contributors, as you can see in the energy sector uh, for the past couple of months. So I just wanted to make sure that you guys were aware of that. Um, all right. Well, I just wanted to make sure that you guys were well aware of what's the expectation uh, for tomorrow's CPI data report. Again, I will be live streaming this one hour before the market opens, uh, and that's going to be at 8.15 a.m., Eastern Standard Time. That's going to be 5.15 a.m. Arizona time. So again, I'd love to have you there. You literally just have to subscribe, drop a thumbs up, and make sure that you set your alarm so you wake up for the freaking live stream. Um, other than that, if you have any questions whatsoever, I hope that you know that I'm always one direct message away, and you can direct message me via Discord, and that's that first link in the description of the video. I hope that this video gave you a better understanding of what the up and coming CPI data report and set expectations and what would cause the market to rise and drop. And if so, I hope that I earned your thumbs up. Looking forward to connecting and friendly reminder, you know, don't forget to follow me on Instagram and that's that third link down below. I appreciate your guys' time. Like always, let's make sure that we end the year on a green note. Take it easy team.